United States Supreme Court, bastion of democracy and the nation's highest tribunal, guarantees justice to all men, even to the eight Nazi saboteurs captured while planning a reign of terror in vital American war industries. In armored vans, under strong military escort, the prisoners roll through the Capitol to the courtroom of the Department of Justice. Strict secrecy is maintained. The public gets not so much as a glimpse of them. For these men, accused of attempted espionage, sabotage, and treason, the United States government demands the full penalty of death. Here in the sands along the Atlantic coast, the Federal Bureau of Investigation uncovered the first damaging evidence. Buried cases of TNT and other incendiary devices. Detected coming ashore from submarines in the middle of the night, they stored their deadly supplies and fled inland where they were captured. Boxes containing thermite and detonator caps are not easily explained in time of war. At headquarters, the FBI reveals uniforms the invaders brought. A money belt that carried 174,000 American dollars to finance their deeds of destruction. Innocent looking wooden blocks, when examined by government experts under X-ray, reveal hidden detonator caps. Caps made in Germany to wage a war of terror behind America's home front. Here are seemingly harmless pens and pencils, but they're heavily loaded incendiaries. That one little wooden pencil could have started disastrous fires, but a vigilant nation caught them in time. By special order of President Roosevelt, seven generals were commissioned to hear the case, to give the prisoners a fair and impartial trial. High-ranking officers were appointed to defend them, and they pled eloquently in their behalf. For 18 days, the prisoners were brought before the bar of justice, shielded, protected, given access to all the process of the laws of democracy. J. Edgar Hoover, head of the FBI, followed every phase of their trial. Now, in official courtroom films made only by army cameramen, the military tribunal nears the end of its dramatic session, a session unparalleled in all U.S. history. The court weighs the evidence. Here's U.S. Attorney General Biddle, established beyond all question of doubt that these men came as enemy agents, that they plotted and planned the destruction of American lives and property, that they brought weapons and the money with which to carry out the orders of the Nazis. And when two of the prisoners confessed, the fate of the other six was sealed. The verdict, death at dawn. Democratic justice sounding a warning to all who would invade America.